Hi everyone, how's everyone doing? I am super excited because tonight we are doing a live interview with fashion lawyer Carmen Caserta. Hi Coco Brianna, how are you? Nice to see you on. I'm going to wait a couple minutes for our speaker to get on. I'm super excited, guys. Hi, everyone. This is Christine Dahl with Fashion Ninja Warrior. I am super excited tonight to be here. Hi, Avery. How are you? Tonight, we are going to interview Carmen Caserta. She is a fashion lawyer practicing in both New York and the state of California. Hey, Carmen. How are you? All right. Let's see if we can get Carmen on here. There we go. Hey. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Doing good. I'm going to wait a couple of seconds here for just some people to get on. Um, totally. In the meantime, I'll do my little uh, introduction for you guys. So hi, everyone. Christine Dahl from Fashion Angel Warrior. So happy to be here. We are doing our weekly Facebook and Instagram Live, although tonight we're just doing Instagram Live. So if you're used to our Facebook Lives, Hopefully you're watching this on Instagram. We'll post it eventually on Facebook, so don't worry. Um, and it'll eventually be posted everywhere else as well, on YouTube and our blog and all that fun stuff. But if you are watching this on Instagram uh, and you miss it, because it will be up in our stories for 24 hours, head on over to our Facebook group, The Fearless Fashionpreneur, and you can watch all of our videos there. This is episode number 67. We've done 67 of these, which is crazy. <laughs> so much free information for you guys. So definitely make sure to head on over to our Fearless Fashionpreneur Facebook group to watch all of the videos in there. Okay, so tonight I'm super excited because we have a very special guest, fashion lawyer, Carmen Caserta, and we're going to discuss all kinds of things. We're going to discuss FTC labeling requirements. We're going to discuss social media advertising laws. We're going to discuss sustainability practices. I think, Carmen, you might be delayed here. We might have to switch back, Carmen, to your um... – oh, I think you're back. Is that, back. Is that better? Okay. You're Sorry back. about that. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have any issues with the Wi-Fi yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so anyway, back to my introduction. I'm super excited to have Carmen Caserta here, fashion lawyer. She's going to talk all about FTC labeling requirements, sustainability, uh, social media advertising laws, and so much more. So get your questions ready. And hopefully, we'll be able to answer all of them. I know I've got a couple questions for you. Um, but before we begin, let's um, give our listeners a little bit of your background, where you're from, mm. how you got into fashion law, all of that great stuff. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. This is so much fun. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I'm originally from Los Angeles, uh, born and raised in L.A. I'm a Southern California girl. Um, and then lived in San Diego for 13 years, um, lived in Manhattan for one year, about 10 or 11 years ago, and then always wanted to come back. Um, and, uh, so just last summer I did relocate back to Manhattan permanently. So now I am here. Yay, um, New York City girl. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, and um, so when I um, was admitted to practice law um, back in uh, 2017, um, you know, it was, I, I always knew I didn't really want to go um, and work in a big law firm. Um, it just kind of was never my style. Um, and I, I really wanted to um, integrate my practice of law with um, my passion, which is fashion. So um, I have a, a, a solo practice, and um, and I practice in the fashion space, and I love it. Awesome. Yeah. And now I know you're also a fashion editor as well. Yes, yes, yeah. So um, that is what I do um, for creative fulfillment. It is so much fun. I write 
um, freelance, you know, for some publications. Um, and it's fabulous. I get to go to um, fashion industry events and runway shows, and I get to speak my mind on, you know, trends and styles and, um, you know, write really fun editorials on where to go shopping and how to style things. And some more, um, sometimes I also get to write some more serious opinion pieces. Um, so I am absolutely loving that. Yes. Awesome. And on top of all of this, you're also a part-time fashion design student at Parsons and a singer-songwriter, which is amazing. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, of course, I, you know, as someone who loves fashion and always has for, I mean, I've always loved fashion my whole life. It's been really yeah. at, the, at the forefront of my life and the way that I um, express myself and my creativity. Um, I thought, you know, I, I mean, I really do have an interest in design. Who knows if I could be a, you know, a designer, but I, I, yeah. like to, I really like to explore my, um, my interests and my passions. It's something I really value. So, um, I am taking a class at Parsons. We'll see what comes of it, but, you know, it's just really fun to, um, to be learning the language of fashion design, you yes. know? And I think it makes you better as a lawyer, right? Because now you can relate better to your clients. They're all coming to you right from the fashion design world, I'm sure. Um, and it just helps you have a better understanding, a better perspective of what they're going through. Absolutely. And, you know, that's really important to me. And I feel like, you know, as a creative, as a person who, you know, I really feel like I am an artist at heart. Um, it's, you know, I do have um, a genuine connection with you know with with my clients um i understand what they're what they're doing and and you know what's driving them because it, it drives me too and so that's you know my music is um it's it's a very personal form of self-expression for me but um it's something that i've always loved yeah cool awesome so yeah. thanks so much for telling us a little bit about yourself. Everyone, make sure that you follow Carmen on Instagram, Carmen Caserta. Make sure you go to her website, cclawstudio.com, and you can always email her any of your questions, Carmen at cclawstudio.com. Yes. So let's get into the juicy questions that I have prepared for you. Okay, I'm ready. Um, I don't know how juicy they are, but they're juicy to me, I guess. They're great. Um, they're great, yeah. <laughs> So FTC labeling, I know yes. that I personally, as a fashion consultant, get probably the most common question I get asked is, can I put made in the USA on my labels? And so maybe you can kind of talk a little bit about the rules and regulations for that. Yes. So this is a pretty straightforward answer. Um, and the answer is yes, you can put made in the USA um, if two conditions are met. Um, the first is that the the garment is actually made in the USA, right? Um, right. And the second is that all of the materials are also made in the USA. So um, the textile, the fabric, everything that is um, that goes into the garment must also have been made in the USA. So all the components, including the components. zippers, buttons, yeah, all of that yes. stuff, pretty much. Okay. Yes. And so products um, made entirely in the USA of materials and component components also made in the USA can and actually must be labeled made in the USA um, or right. some equivalent phrase of that. Okay. Um, and then uh, products made in the USA of imported fabrics or other components, um, the label must indicate that the product contains imported materials um, the label may identify the country of origin for those other components, but does not need to, but does right. need to indicate that um, the product does contain imported materials. Okay. So if your garment is made here in the USA, but the fabric, let's say, is coming from China, you could put made in the USA of Chinese goods or made in the USA of imported goods something along yeah. those lines, right? Yeah, ma made in the USA of imported fabrics or of imported materials. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so someone's asking about thread. I don't think thread is probably <laughs> taken into consideration uh, where the thread is actually got, came from originally. I don't know. What are your thoughts on the thread? Yeah. Well, so what's the question exactly? I um, think what they're asking is, so if, if fabric... I guess the, what the scenario would be, let's say the fabric's made here, the trims are made here, the zippers are made here, the buttons, but maybe the thread is from another country. 
do you have to specify? Yeah. That's so the thread? It's a, the, so um, I'm, I'm guessing this is this means like the fibers that were used to make the textile. And if the fi- I think they or, mean the sewing thread, I'm guessing. Oh, the, oh for the like the seams. Thread. Yes. Oh, for like actually sewing. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I um, believe. Bliss Joy that, Bull, let us know if that's what you're, what you're asking. Um, yeah. That's very detailed. Um, it is. I've you never know gotten what? that question before. <laughs> yeah, that's really quite detailed. Uh, I, you know, I honestly don't know exactly, but yeah. um, I would always say err on the side of caution. And right. I mean, so look, thread is a material. Yeah, it's, she said th- sewing thread. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the sewing thread is a material that's being used as a component of the garment. If it's imported thread, you know, it it's, yeah. it's goes to logic that you should say that it's made of, with imported materials. materials. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would always err on the side of caution, too. You never want to get in trouble for anything, and it's better to be yeah. over-detailed and over-specify everything than to go under. I know I had a client one time that was producing in Colombia, mm-hmm. and she was bringing her scarves into the U.S., and the reason she was producing in Colombia was because of the duty-free aspect. Mm, but okay, she did yes. not check to make sure. And I told her, check to make sure where your fabric is actually coming from. And she said, mm-hmm. oh no, the factory is getting the fabric for me. Well, the factory um, was providing it, but they weren't making right. it. And the fab- mm-hmm. fabric actually came from China and she got taxed on all that stuff coming into the U.S. Yeah. So that's like, yeah. It's there's really big. Lot, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of laws regulating international trade and things like that too, which is not my area of expertise. But, um, yeah, there's so many ins and outs and lots of moving parts. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so that was my question on the whole FTC thing. If anyone else has any other questions, feel free to type them as we're going along here. But now I would like to move on to social media ads because I know that all of us are probably on Instagram. All of us are probably working with influencers or thinking about working with influencers. And so what is the law or what's the, the general policy on, you know, how does, how do you appropriately label a sponsored Mm -hmm. post? Do you have to put hashtag ad? Do you have to put a sponsored ad? You know, do you have to specifically label something? I've heard so many different takes on this, on this answer here. So, right. So this is, this is really a big one. This is, and this is a really big deal. And and, um, the federal trade commission um, FTC for short, of course, is um, really does take this seriously. And um, so the the sort of overarching concept to keep in mind and to always be asking yourself is, um, could this post be misleading to the public? Right. Um, And so, I mean, the short answer is like, if you're, you know, if you're a fashion designer um, and you are, you know, paying an influencer, that influence to to, to post um, and promote your product that right. influencer, yes, 100% does have to indicate that it is an ad. Um, and it really is the designer's responsibility um, to make sure that the designer has policies in place, um, you know, when contracting with influencers um, that that indicate that, you know, this really does need to be done. So, like, hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored, hashtag paid. Pick one. You don't have to put all of them. Okay. But, um, okay. Yeah. But definitely you need to pick one. And yeah, you, you do need to indicate that it's a paid um, or sponsored post. Okay. And now do those hashtags have to be in a certain place in the post? Like, does it matter if they're at the top of the post, at the bottom of the post, in a caption, along with your other hashtags? I've heard some different things on this. It matters very much okay. where, where the hashtag is. The hashtag must be prominent. Um, that's very important. It must be prominent. It cannot be buried in with the rest of your 30 hashtags. Okay. Um, it also must appear before the caption gets truncated. So, you know, how if we write kind of yes. a lot. Yes, yes, yes. And then it says more, and you can click on more, and then more is Read revealed more. in the caption. Right. The, the hashtag must appear before the caption gets truncated. So, honestly, like, the safest thing to do is have the hashtag ad or hashtag paid 
or hashtag sponsored be the very first word in your caption. Right. You know, okay. that's just, that's how you can make sure that it won't get yeah. truncated. And it's it, because it must be clear and it must be prominent. It doesn't okay. have to be on, on your image. Right, right. But, but in the yeah. caption part of and it. And I, I, I can also say that, um, you know, Instagram now um, allows you to put like in like where the lo like up where the location is, um, you know, you can put like paid sponsorship with so and so such and such oh, a brand or whatever. Okay. okay. That's actually not going to be sufficient. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right. So um, you can go ahead and do that, but right. you still need to um, indicate that it's an ad with a hashtag. Right. Okay. Interesting. That's so yeah. interesting. Now, the flip side of this is what happens if you're just gifting product for free? You're not actually paying an influencer, right? But you're just giving them product for free and they're saying, okay, I'm going to post a picture of this on my page. Do they then in that case need to write hashtag ad? Or yes, they do. Okay. Yes. They still do. Same. Okay. Same rule, same exact rule applies. Okay. And again, um, because they are being compensated, right? So we can get compensated in all kinds of ways, not just cash. Okay. So a free garment or free product, that's compensation. Okay. And, um, you know, that, um, so again, always be asking yourself, you know, could this be misleading? Could this mislead the public into thinking that the influencer or, you know, wh whoever is posting um, is, is doing so, just completely independently. Right. Um, and I mean, you know, generally the answer to that question is yes. If you don't put an ad, right. then, you know, the public is going, can very easily be misled into thinking that this is a completely independent post when it's right. not. Right. Yeah. So if they, if the influencer went out on their own and bought something and it happened to be your product and decided to wear it and post it, but you didn't gift them the product, then it's fine. They don't need to put anything because they purchased the product with their own money. They went out on their own accord to, to do it and it's fine. But if you're yeah. gifting it to them, it's considered, that's considered compensation and they still need to do the hashtag ad. Exactly right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So yep. that definitely clears a lot of things up. Hopefully that's really, that's really useful for you guys. Yeah. Um, and then I also know that I have a lot of clients that we're working with to get, celebrities to wear their stuff right mm -hmm. and so if they gift a product to a celebrity mm -hmm. and the celebrity happens to wear the product and they find a picture of the celeb let's just say in in style magazine or people magazine right wearing their product can the designer use that photo and promote that photo on their instagram social media all that stuff or do they need to get permission consent yeah. from the actual celebrity or influencer, yeah. let's say, to post that picture. Yeah, so this is pretty tricky, and this can actually get very serious. Um, so I have written a little bit about this. I have actually a few articles on this. This is called The Right of Publicity. So um, to read more extensively about this, you can actually go to my um, Fashion Law editorial at my website, which is um, cclawstudio.com slash opaque is out and um, I have some articles there on the right of publicity and um, so basically the right of publicity everyone has the right of publicity whether or not you are a celebrity or an influencer or someone famous um, every single person inherently possesses the right of publicity um, the right is um, basically our um, we all have the right to control the commercial use of our image, um, our voice, and our name. Okay. And um, so this is kind of a long-winded way of saying. <laughs> yeah. That, sorry. Um, no, it's okay. That, yeah, so that it, 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 um, it can get pretty tricky if you're a designer and you see a celebrity um, who has worn your garment um, or you've, you've given them your garment. It can get pretty tricky if you try to, if you go ahead and post that image if it is for the purpose of advertisement or trade. So if you're, if you're posting an image, let's say, you know, a celebrity has worn something that you've designed and you would like to post that picture. Well, if that picture, if you're posting that picture on your Instagram account for the purposes of advertising your product or for right. the purpose of, of getting, 
you know, um, your followers or, you know, the public to, to, to purchase that product, then you're, you're, you're doing, you're posting for the purpose of advertisement or trade. And that is not allowed without written consent. Okay. So you absolutely must get written consent from the celeb influencer or really, I mean, anyone, anyone period. Yeah. Um, but pr probably only the celebs or influencers are going to be the one that care <laughs> the most yes. about it. <laughs> because they're, you know, I mean, their image is really their most valuable asset in, in, a, in right. you know, right. a lot of times. So, um, you know, they, they have a very high interest in controlling the commercial use of, of their image. Yeah. And that makes but, sense. Yeah. Yes. You know, and they were, they have worked hard for that and, and, um, you know, that's their livelihood. Yeah. Um, but this happens all the time. It happens all imagine. the time. You know, huge brands doing this. Wow. Um, yeah, but, but they're, you know, they get sued for it. Right. So um, this is something you really have to be really, really very careful of. So just reach out, you know, and it's a great opportunity um, to to um, to make a connection with someone who is, you know, and to, to build relationships. So if someone's wearing your garment, um, you know, it's and you want to post that picture, it's a great, perfect opportunity to reach out and say, oh, my gosh, I'm so flattered. You know, please, may I post this picture of you wearing my yeah. dress on my Instagram? Um yeah, but but definitely like you need to get permission. And is there a proper way to reach out? Like does a DM to their Instagram account suffice or do they need to go through a different method? What's the proper way, do you think, to reach out to somebody to get their consent? Yeah, well, um, you know, as an attorney, uh, really the, the most ethical thing that I can say is to, you know, get a contract is to get it in writing and have, you know, have, um, have a lawyer draft a contract for you, um, you know, and have that, you know, influencer or celebrity sign, give written consent right. in a legal, in a legal document. Right. Right. Yeah. So you all need to hire Carmen to draft you up <laughs> and write a publicity yeah. contract. Um, yeah. and that way you can get all the celebs and you can, have everything be good. And you make a really good point, too, because it gives you a chance to reach out to them. And who knows, if they really like your line, maybe they'll buy more of your line or maybe they'll be a totally. brand ambassador for your line or you can gift them something else to wear. And, you know, they can they can kind of be the face of your brand. Right. So that's a really good opportunity to just get more publicity. So totally. definitely reach out to them. OK, yeah. so I want to go back for a minute because we had another question here from Bliss hmm. Joy Bull. So she wants to clarify again, going back to the whole made in the USA, if all other mm -hmm. components are made in the USA, could you say something like made in the USA exclusive of trim? Um, you know, I, th that's getting really specific and yeah. I, I don't, um, I don't think I should answer that specific of a question, um, without really digging into the research a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so understand, you know, guys, that Carmen is an attorney and she's yeah. bound, you know, legally to not be able to give very specific advice. She would have to literally sit down with you, meet with you, probably get to know your brand, specifically what you're doing in order yeah. to guide you in the right direction. So that might be a little bit of a too specific question. Yeah. But email me. Yes. And we email can talk. her. <laughs> yes. And she's also yeah. offering, which we'll talk about at the end too. She's also offering a great promo for all of you that are listening to this live right now. So you can have a free 30 minute in-person legal consultation. Her consults are typically $75 for an hour. So she's literally giving you a free 30 minute in-person legal consultation just for being on this live. Just use the yeah. promo code fashion angel warrior IG live, and you can take advantage of that 30 minute free consultation, which is so nice of you, Carmen. Thank you so much. Yay, my pleasure. Yeah. Okay, so let's keep going. We've got a couple more questions. So I have a lot of, uh, a lot of fashion designers that are yeah. also doing a lot with sustainability. They want to do an eco-friendly line, a green line. They want to use organic cotton. They want to use vegan leather. They want to use, you know, ethically made, ethically sourced. Yeah. 
Um, what are the laws as far as labeling things, you know, eco-friendly, yeah. sustainable, yeah. green, ethically made? Like, I feel like this is a huge topic in and of itself, but if you can it kind is. of summarize a little bit. Um, yes, it is a huge topic. And, um, I mean, first I just want to like totally encourage, you know, designers to be really thinking about this kind of thing. It's yeah. so, it's so important to be thinking about, um, sustainability and that's a huge umbrella, right? Sustainability. And it really encompasses right. many, many, many things. Um, you know, envir uh, environmental, um, concerns as well as human concerns, right? But environmental concerns are of course human, but also labor and working conditions and wages and all those kinds of things fall under the umbrella of sustainability. Um, anyway, with that said, um, there, there is a statute actually that you can look up, um, regarding, um, um, marketing, like doing environmentally conscious mar or marketing a product as being environmentally friendly. Okay. So the statute is 16 CFR section 260. Okay. Okay. And, um, you know, it's, it's wordy and everything, but it's, it's important, you know, you can look that up and it, it has a lot of great information. So, um, but the main, the main things to know and take away about labeling your line eco-friendly or sustainable, um, are, are four main, four main, uh, rules. Your label must be clear and prominent. Um, you have to be able, number two, you have to be able to substantiate the label. So it has to be true, right? So whatever right. you put in your, in your label, you have to be able to substantiate that. Um, number three, the product, uh, has, does have to be environmentally ben beneficial overall. So, um, that means like, you know, it, let's say you have like a jacket and, um, just the trim is, you know, made of like organic, you know, materials or recycled polyester, just, you know, just the trim or just the lining. You, you couldn't necessarily ethically really label that as an eco-friendly product if most of it right. is, is not eco-friendly, right? Okay. okay. Um, so yeah. And then, and then again, you can't make any deceptive claims, but that's common sense, right? So just, um, it's really important that you can actually substantiate any claims that you're making. Yeah. And I think that's a good rule of thumb in general, right? If, right. if someone comes after you and, and decides to debate you right on whatever it is, you're labeling your garment, whether it's made in the USA, whether you're talking about eco-friendly, this, that, whatever, you should be able to have a leg to stand on and have substantial evidence that no, this mm -hmm. is indeed eco-friendly. This is indeed ethically made, whatever the case may be. Absolutely. Okay, cool. And are there certifications that brands can apply for? I've heard of things like, you know, mm -hmm, fair mm -hmm. trade certified, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or I know PETA has one for like the whole vegan leather thing. Mm -hmm. um, are there other types of certifications? Like can brands apply for these things so that it's known in the fashion mm -hmm. world? Okay, we're a very eco-friendly, sustainable brand. Yes. So you totally took two of my answers. <laughs> um, but yeah, so PETA approved vegan is, um, is a certification that you can apply for. And this one's cool because you can certify certain products as PETA approved vegan, but you can also, um, certify your entire brand cool. as, as PETA, as a PETA approved vegan line. Brand, right. B brand, yeah. Um, so that's one. And then also fair trade certified, which you, which you mentioned. And this one certifies, um, well, actually, let me just rewind a bit. So PETA approved vegan certifies that products are made with 100% vegan materials and that no animals were, were harmed, um, or tested, te right. you, you know, tested on or anything like that. Right. And then the fair trade certified certifies that people making the product were paid a living wage. Um, that were, they were working, um, under safe working conditions and that the manufacturing process, um, has measures in place to protect the environment. So I just want to say that there is a caveat here to the fair, fair trade certified, 
Um, you know, some people, I mean, you know, are, um, have some complaints with this one because okay. it's a little bit vague. It's a little okay. bit vague. And, um, so, you know, what I can say to that is just, you know, you really have, as a, as a, as a designer, as a brand, you really have to ask yourself, what is, what is most important to me? Is it, you know, um, is it the vegan initiative? You know, is it the, um, you know, is it the, the, um, living wage initiative? You know, is it the, uh, smallest, um, carbon footprint initiative, right? So right, there's all, right. like I said, there's sustainability is a big umbrella. So there's all these, exactly. little, you know, so you really have to ask yourself, what is, what is my most important initiative here and, and search for those certifications. So the other one, this is like the, the big, big, big one, and that's blue sign. Oh, and the, okay. Yeah, and the blue sign certification is like super highly coveted um, in terms of um, so th this one certifies that it, that textiles ha um, have the smallest eco footprint possible. Wow. Okay. Yes. So it's going to be probably pretty difficult to get, but right. um, but it's worth looking up and um, you know and, and looking for. into that one. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would recommend to anyone that if you're serious about creating a line, creating a brand that is, you know, under the sustainable, sustainability umbrella, try to get a certification. Yes. Why not? I mean, it's, it's only going to help your brand. Yeah. There's also, um, there's a few more, um, by Oeco Techs. So there's one called Sustainable Textile, uh, Production. Step. STEP. Okay. And this is given to companies to show that they promote good working conditions. Um, the, then there's GOTS, G-O-T-S, Global Organic Textile Standard. So that's for, like, organic fibers. Right, right, right. Um, there's lots. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. So do research. Do homework. Yeah. I always tell yeah. all my clients. Um, if this is, again, something important to you, start doing the research and looking into what you can actually get and what you can mm -hmm. label your garments as and what you can, you know, officially say. Yeah. Um, I know also on the side of the labor side of things, right, when designers are sourcing manufacturers, they're always concerned about, you know, ethical practices and are the workers treated properly? Um what can you say, I guess, on that topic and how can we make sure, you know, a factory is ethical, I guess? Yeah. So this is really, um, the, the, so a lot goes into this and it's, um, kind of complicated, you know, you, you can look for certifications and there's certain certifications that like, you know, every factory, um, should have. And, and, you know, so like the, um, ISO, nine zero zero one two thousand fifteen okay this is this is issued by the international organization for standardization it's one of the most widely used quality management systems um in the world so you know your factory should probably have that certification um you know but you know, sort of in addition to looking for certifications, you need to ask a lot of questions. Yeah. So some, you know, some questions like how much do you pay your workers? You know, right. um, are they paid are, by the hour or are they paid yes. by the piece? Which is very right. important. And it's, it's technically legal to pay someone by the piece if they're still making a minimum wage. However, keep in mind, most factories that are paying by the piece typically are not hitting those minimum wages. Mm. And I also tell my, my clients as well, do you really want to have to know that someone's being paid by the piece? They're probably going to now work a lot faster, right? Yeah. To get your garments done. And then maybe the quality is going to suffer at the end of the day. So I think that's always a really good question. Yeah. Not yeah. to cut you off there, Carmen, but go ahead. No, no, <laughs> please. Absolutely. And it's, yeah, it's, you know, what's your pay structure and, you know, um, super important for many reasons. Um, what are the working hours? Uh, can I inspect the factory? Like, go, you know, go there and yeah. ask if you can walk around and check it out. Is it clean? Is it safe? What's the temperature inside? Like when you walk in there, are you like dying? Like, is it, are you sweating? Is it terrible? Is it so hot? You know, is it freezing cold? I mean, you know, is there a break room? Are there bathrooms? Are the bathrooms clean? Is it sanitary? You know, is there a place to put, you know, food? Um, 
do 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 um, does the factory have all of the required legal bulletins on display, right? So like for um, workers' rights and sexual harassment, and you know, there's all these um, legal bulletins and and um, sort of know your rights things that are required in the workplace. Yeah. So go there and check it out. Um, and you know, I mean, it's like if you ask, um, hey, can I come check out the factory? And they say no. You know that that could be a red flag there. Well, exactly. You know why can't I come check it out? You know, right, um, right. So yeah, ask a lot, a lot of questions, um, and check for these certifications. Um, I think that one that I mentioned, the ISO uh, nine zero zero one two thousand fifteen, is like the biggest one. Were you gonna? No, that's it. That's the one I was gonna say. Yeah, that's the one. Yes. Um, and then you know, if you're looking for some more, you know, there's like um, there's a fair trade certification that's issued by the World Fair Trade Organization (WFTO). Um, um, certifiable standards dedicated to providing farmers and workers in developing countries with increased wages and working conditions. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's it's asking a lot of questions and looking for that main certification, I would say, generally. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. And then my last question, and if anyone else has any questions, please chime in for Carmen here. Uh, when you're sourcing fabrics and textiles, how can you know for sure when they make claims like this is recycled polyester or this is organic cotton? Are there certain things to look for to make sure that you're actually indeed getting recycled polyester? Right. So we talked um, we talked at the beginning about labeling requirements and regulations. So there are laws in place, you know, as as I said earlier, that require that labels be true and and, and accurate. So, um, you know, you have you can trust the label. And if if you know, if that's not sort of enough for you then ask the textile manufacturer to provide information on the fiber source. So, um, because, you know, I think you meant, like you mentioned earlier, um, the, the, the textile manufacturer is making, making the fabric, but you know, where are they getting the fiber? So if you right. want to trace that back and th this is like supply chain stuff, right? So right. if you want to really, you know, dig in and, and um, test that label and really verify what the label is saying, then ask for information on, um, on the fiber and go, go to the source. Yeah, that's very, that's very smart. And I always recommend all my designers ask for an FDS sheet, like every fabric that you sample that you plan to use for your line Get an FDS sheet, a fabric detail sheet. We provide one to all of our clients, all of our FSI students that clearly has all of these questions. You know, what is the country of origin? What is the fiber content? What's the washing instructions? All of this stuff is on the FDS sheet so that you know ahead of time what, what it is you're really working with and where it's coming from. Mm. And, yes, you mentioned washing instructions. You know, that's actually required. FTC has um, regulations on um, labeling um, how to wash garments, too. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a big thing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Carmen. Oh, my gosh. This was so awesome. I think everyone got so much out of it. 70 Bella Babe also said that checking the working conditions of a factory is important whether you're sustainable or not, in my opinion, which I agree. Yes. Of course. Definitely. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Always. Yes. Always. Um, and if you guys are interested in more of that too, I know Fashion Revolution is a really great um, mm -hmm. organization that deals with making sure that all factories are really ethical and there's no child labor and no sweatshops yeah. and safe yeah. conditions and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. Okay, great. So like we said before, if you want to take advantage of that 30 minute free consultation with Carmen, definitely email her, carmen at cclawstudio.com to redeem that. Definitely use the promo code Fashion Angel Warrior IG Alive, and you'll be able to take, take advantage of that. Check her out on Instagram at Carmen Caserta. You can follow her there. Check her website out, cclawstudio.com. Thank you again, Carmen, so much. Is there anything else you wanted to add that I'm missing here? 
No, I mean, thank you so much for having me. This was super fun and I'd love to do it again sometime. And I really hope yeah. to hear from, I really would love to, to hear from, you know, anyone who was here tonight. Um, yeah. So please feel welcomed to reach out. Awesome. And I know that you're also seeking fashion contributors, right? For your, for the website. Yeah. Yes. If you're interested in writing or pitching some, some, um, some articles, on, um, you know, legal if issues, ethical issues um, in the fashion space, or just fun styling, fashion-related articles, or anything really in the fashion space, send me an email, pitch me some ideas. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So a couple Thanks, other Christine. announcements. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Carmen. A couple other announcements, guys. We have our Miami Manufacturing Tour coming up on May 31st. You can definitely sign up for that. Go to MiamiFashionTour.eventbrite.com. I think our early bird is almost sold out, so definitely be sure to sign up for that. We have our LA Manufacturing Tour June 20th, LAFashionTour3.eventbrite.com. And then we're going to be doing a New York City retail showroom tour. This is the first one of its kind. It's coming up in May. We'll give you some details on that. So if you're interested in working with a showroom, buying whole wholesale or looking for your own retail space in New York City, we're going to show you the places to go. It's going to be amazing. Awesome. And as always, we're here. Yes, tons of fun. As always, we're here. If you have any questions, if you need any one-on-one -on -one coaching, we are also doing social media management services, influencer marketing, Facebook ads, you name it, we probably can handle it for you. So hopefully reach out to us schedule a free 20 minute consultation and we'll talk about all of our services next week. We won't be here. We'll be in Dallas. So there won't be a Facebook, Instagram live, but stay tuned in two weeks. We'll be back and we'll be at a new time, 8 PM Eastern standard instead of 7 PM Eastern standard. So thanks everyone for type for tuning in. And thank you again, Carmen so much. I appreciate your My time pleasure. and I learned so much from talking to you. Yay. All right, everyone. Yes. Have a great night. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.